Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about a very important physical quantity which is called momentum. Now, uh, to understand this, let us take an example. Now, we, uh, we know that a cricket ball is heavier than a tennis ball, right? The mass of a cricket ball is more than the mass of a tennis ball. Now, let's say these two balls were thrown with the same speed. Now, when, it, when these two balls are thrown, after that, let's say we want to stop these two balls. Now, we know since the mass of this cricket ball is more as compared to the mass of this tennis ball, it will be harder for us to uh, stop this cricket ball as compared to the tennis ball. So, more effort is required to stop a cricket ball than the tennis ball. Now, this means that we need to apply more force to stop a cricket ball as compared to a tennis ball. And uh, in fact, we may even get hurt if we miss a catch with the cricket ball. But we will not get hurt with the tennis ball, right? So, the impact that this cricket ball produces is greater as compared to the impact that this tennis ball produces. So here we conclude that the impact produced by a moving body is directly proportional to its mass. Since the cricket ball is heavier as compared to a tennis ball, it produces much more impact as compared to a tennis ball. Now suppose we have two cricket balls which are of the same mass. Now here there is no difference between the ball, I mean the mass, masses of the two balls, but what we will do is we will throw these two balls with different speeds. Let's say the first ball is thrown with a greater speed as compared to the second ball. Now these two balls are of same masses but the speeds at which they, were, they are thrown is different from each other. Now the ball 1 was thrown with a greater speed as I said as compared to the ball 2. Now when we want to stop these two balls again the force that we require for, uh, for stopping this first ball will be much more as compared to the force that we require to stop ball number 2 because the speed at which this ball was thrown is greater as compared to the speed at which the second ball was thrown. So here the force required to stop the first ball will be more as compared to the force required to stop the second ball. And the reason behind this is the uh, greater speed with which the first ball was thrown. So here we can conclude from this observation that the impact produced by a moving body is also proportional to the velocity of the moving body. Just because the first ball was thrown with a greater speed, we needed greater force to stop that ball as compared to the second ball which was thrown with a lesser speed as compared to the first ball. Now let us take another example for a better understanding. Now uh, we clearly know that the mass of a truck is much more than the mass of a bicycle. Now here if these two objects are moving with the same speed, uh, what will happen is that if the truck is moving even at a very low speed of 5 meters per second, it can even kill a person who comes in its, on its way. But if the same speed is uh, of this bicycle, then it hardly makes any impact to the man who was uh, in front of the bicycle. So from here we can conclude that the impact that this truck produces even at uh, the speed of 5 meters per second is much much more as compared to the impact that this bicycle produces when it moves with the speed of 5 meters per second which is the same as that of truck. So the force exerted by the truck is much much greater as compared to the force exerted by the bicycle and that's the reason why this truck produces more impact as compared to the bicycle with the, uh, traveling with the same speed. So the conclusion that we draw from here is that the impact that a moving body produces is directly proportional to its mass. Now let's take another example 
uh, we have let's say two bullets now these two bullets are of the same mass we'll name it as bullet number one and bullet number two now let's say the first bullet was shot from a gun and the second bullet was just thrown onto a wall you know what will happen right the first bullet which which was shot from a gun uh, penetrates through the wall penetrates into the wall but the second bullet which was just thrown with our hands hardly makes any impact to the wall so from here we conclude that uh, this first bullet which was thrown with i mean which was shot with a gun makes more impact as compared to the second bullet which was simply thrown in fact the first bullet may even kill a person if a person uh, comes in the way of the bullet so we conclude from here that the impact produced by a moving body is directly proportional to its velocity because since uh, these though the two masses of these two bullets are exactly the same just because they are shot with a different speed we see a different impact i mean a totally different impact with these two bullets so the conclusions that we draw from all these examples we will be listing out here the conclusion that we draw is the impact produced by a body or an object which is moving depends upon two factors that is the mass of the object and the velocity of the object the more massive an object is the more impact it produces and the more velocity that the body is moving with produces more impact now quantity a physical quantity which relates these two things that is the mass and the velocity of a moving body is named as momentum so a moment the momentum of a particular body i mean a moving body is a relation between the mass and the velocity of that particular object so we define momentum as the momentum of an object is defined as the product of the mass and the velocity of a moving body now we denote this momentum by a letter p so p equals m into v so p which is the momentum equals mass into velocity of the body here m is the mass and v is the velocity of the body now we can also define momentum as the amount of motion contained in a body now the momentum of a body which is a physical quantity has both magnitude and a direction now we know that any physical quantity which has a magnitude and direction is called as a vector quantity so this momentum is also a vector quantity now what is the direction in which the momentum comes into play the direction of momentum is exactly along the direction of motion of the body i mean the direction in which the velocity of the body acts is the same as the direction of motion that is along the direction in which the body is moving so this is the direction of momentum of a particular moving body now the unit in which we measure momentum let us try to figure out what it is we know the formula for momentum which is mass into velocity now from in from this expression we will figure out what is the unit in which momentum of a body can be measured we know that the unit of mass is kg and the unit of velocity is meters per second so on putting these two units in this expression we get the unit of momentum to be kg meter per second so this is the unit in uh, by which by using which we measure the momentum of a particular body so the unit of measurement of a momentum of momentum of a particular body is kg meters per second now for a body which is at rest its velocity is zero right since it is at rest it's not moving at all for such a body the momentum is zero that means a body which is at rest has no momentum at all and if the body is moving only then it possesses momentum since it has velocity as well along with mass so a moving body possesses momentum whereas a body which is at rest has no momentum at all now this 
is the end of this video and we have learned in this video that the momentum of a body is the amount of motion contained in a body it is a relationship between the mass of a moving body and the velocity with which the body is moving the expression from which we can calculate well, uh, calculate this momentum is p equals m into v where p is the momentum of the body and m is the mass and v is the velocity with which it is moving the unit in terms of which we measure momentum is kg meters per second the momentum of a body at rest is zero and the momentum of a moving body has some certain value which means that a moving body has momentum whereas a body which is at rest has no momentum at all so i hope this video was helpful to you thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning